Charis viewer, you welcome to Hope Sabbath School Bible Discussion. We are glad that, I'm glad that we, we are doing fine. By the grace of God, we are alive. And we are studying, we are still studying the book of Hebrews from January to March, the first quarter of the year. And so, if you join in our discussion for the first time, this is Hope TV, Sabbath School Bible Discussion. And we're looking at the book of Hebrews. This week, we're studying the 10th lesson or the 10th episode of the book of Hebrews. And we have a very interesting title, which is Jesus Opens the Way Through the Veil. Wow. Jesus Opens the Way Through the Veil. This lesson will help us to understand or appreciate that Jesus is representing us before the throne of God, the Father. And as a result of that, it's like we standing in the presence of God. We've, we, we've, we've already found ourselves in the presence of God. And so we come boldly before the throne of God as if we are in his presence because our advocate Jesus is there. Um, I'm going to be joined by um, Midwest Ghana Conference once again. Mid-South, Mid-South Ghana Conference. And I'm joined by Elder Ellis Patrick Esiam. Elder Ellis Patrick Esiam. He worships at, at Cape Coast West. Um, he is at Cape Coast West District. And the central church of that district is Pedu Central Church, right? Pedu. Pedu, yeah. Pedu. Pedu Central Church. Elder, you're welcome. Thank you, Pastor. I hope you are fine. By the grace of God. Right. We thank God that you've been able to join us. I also have our pastor, Pastor Eric Osborne Norte. Pastor Eric Osborne Norte is the Cape Coast Central District pastor. And Pastor and Elder come all the way from Cape Coast to um, help review and discuss the lesson. Pastor, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you, it's great. <laughs> all right. So viewers, let us enjoy the special song. After that, our, my panelists are going to help with the discussion of the lesson. Kindly enjoy the song. Comfort and joy, comfort and joy, comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let every sea a king. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. But fields and flowers, but hills and plains. Repeat the song, repeat the song, the song in joy. Repeat, repeat the song in joy. Infers the ground, he comes to make his blessings flow. For us, the curse is found. For us, the curse is found. He rules 
the world, He rules the world, He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love. of His love, comfort and joy. Welcome back. I believe you enjoyed the song. And so before we start, kindly bow your heads as we pray with Elder Ellis. Right. Shall we pray? Almighty Father, we want to thank you and bless your name for the gift of life that you have given unto us. I also want to thank you for making it possible for us to be here. We thank you at this hour that you have given unto us to open your word and study. We pray that you be in our midst as a great teacher. Father, be with us and teach us and give us the understanding of your word so that in these last days, your children will stay awake and faithful to thee, that when you come, we shall all inherit your kingdom. This and many blessings we ask through our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, Jesus opens the way through the veil is the topic that we are going to study, extracted from the book of Hebrews, particularly chapter 9. Chapter 9, and we take the foundational text or the key scripture from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Elder, can you yes, take it for us? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Amen. 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 Elder. Very beautiful. What came to your mind when you read this text? Pastor, when you read this text, as we have studied throughout the nine lessons that we have studied, this text actually opened your eyes that there is a place that the Lord is preparing for his saints. Mm -hmm. Those who will be faithful to him. Mm -hmm. That when uh, the lives and thought that we are going through up and down, when everything is set and Christ appears for the second time, we shall inherit a kingdom. Okay. And what made it beautiful, the past lesson that we've studied, mm. we could see that the earth, the, earth, the earth sanctuary was built by a man. Mm. But for this one, was not built by a man. Mm. Which tells you that this particular sanctuary that the lesson is talking about is very beautiful. And we must all mm -hmm. you know, be eager to enter such a, a, a town or such a country or city mm. that has been prepared for us. All right. So it offers much hope, right? Yes, please. Okay. So, Pastor. Yes. Pastor Osborne. Yes, sir. So, what fascinates you about this text? <sighs> After reading this text, you see the joy in being a Christian. You see the love of God. Mm. You see Jesus Christ standing before the Holy God, pleading for me a sinner. I see the joy. And um, it marvels me that God sent his son to die for me. This Bible test is a reminder mm. that Jesus Christ entered the sanctuary, not made with hands, mm -hmm. and in the presence of God. And I see myself in the spirit standing with Jesus Christ in heaven before God. Wonderful. It, 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 I derive joy. In this Bible test. Wonderful, wonderful. And the 
expression or the statement, Christ not entering into the holy places made with hands. Yes. You know, not made with hands is presenting to us the limitless okay. right. of, of, of <laughs> um, the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. right. Because things made with hands are limited. Are limited. Temporal. 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 Expiry, they have their Transient. Transient. Passing <laughs> away. Right? Yeah. So let's even consider the, 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 the magnificent temples okay. that were built. Right. You know, the, we know that the, uh, the tent, the tabernacle, yeah. was replaced by the temple that Solomon built, okay. which was considered as one of the, 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 the wonders of the ancient world. But even that one was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar. Right? Yes. It was destroyed. And then the second one was built, which didn't even um, have the, 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 the glory the of the, except that Jesus Christ came in there. Exactly. But, but the physical glory was not there. Physical, mm. you know, the physique, it was not like this. Yeah. And that one too was destroyed by the Romans. By the Romans. The Romans. Right? Yes. Now, what other temple again have stood, you know, the test of time? and have stood for ages and is going to stand for ages. Never. Never. All buildings made with human hands fall. This one is not like that. And also, we are told that um, they are copies. What are made by humans are copies mm -hmm. of the truth. Which means that no human system is absolute. Very good. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> no human system mm -hmm. is absolute. Yes. Even when God institutes a system, mm. it represents him. Right. Therefore, focus and attention, we humans representing God, even the, 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 the priesthood, um, we don't have the Levitical system anymore, mm. right? Yeah. But at least we still have the pastoral. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> God has representatives. Yes. What, what are we supposed to do? We have to point yes. to the truth. Yes, the truth. Not to, not to point people to us. Right? So, it's interesting, it's interesting. Um, we know how significant was the ascension of Christ to his new role that he played, that, I mean, he started playing. What's that? You, get my, you get my question? Yes. How significant yes. was Christ's ascension yes. to the role that he Assume You've seen the word being significant or not. I'm even seeing that, uh, excuse me, like understatement. Okay. You see, the ascension of Jesus Christ is something that has to do with um, the eternal life that God has given to man through Christ. Okay. The life of Jesus Christ, let me see, the incarnation of Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Christ. Mm. Without it, there wouldn't have been anything called eternal life. All right. Because Jesus could have come, mm -hmm. because you have so many teachers, mm -hmm. leaders who came once on earth here. But eventually we have Jesus Christ, our Savior, who came. Mm -hmm. And he died like every other leader, religious leader would die. But the difference is Jesus Christ resurrected. Mm -hmm. In his resurrection, he did not stay on the death, he ascended to the truth. In fact, Reading John chapter 20, verse 17, mm -hmm. when he, Jesus Christ was telling um, Mary, mm -hmm. he said, please don't hold on to me. Mm -hmm. Let me go and present myself so to you. your father yes. and to my father. Mm -hmm. So it's so, so, so significant. All right. The ascension of Jesus Christ gives me the assurance mm -hmm. that eternal life is being guaranteed. Good, good. Thank you. So we see here that the, the salvation offer or gift is a package. Yes. A lot of things come together to make it complete. Yep. Right? Yes. A lot of components. You know, many times people dwell so much on one aspect. See the death of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, it's true. But the death, his blood was shed, right? Yes. But even before the death, he had to live a perfect life. 
to make him die a perfect death. Okay. Now, if he had not resurrected, what would have been the use of the, the death. death? And after the resurrection, as Pastor said, if he had not ascended death. and had remained here on earth, would the salvation be complete? No. no. So we need to appreciate the salvation package or offer in all of its complete um, states as a package, as a full package, yeah. and not um, dwell on one to the neglect of, of the other. Okay, so Elder Ellis, yeah, uh, Jesus is before the Father. Yes. How, how, how is that so? Uh, Pastor, you see the text, uh, which is the Hebrews 9:24, that we read as the the memory text. Yes. Also, is the same text that we see on the Sunday's lesson. Mm. Jesus before the Father. Mm. What is Jesus doing before the Father? Mm -hmm. In the ancients, uh, uh, the Israelites, mm. the Bible made us understand that. For every year, the male mm -hmm. were to appear before the Lord mm -hmm. three Time. times yes. to do what? To offer an offering to the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And these offerings you know, were mentioned in the book, the, the Feast of Passover, mm -hmm. the Feast of Weeks, mm -hmm. and the Feast of Boots. Mm -hmm. All this has its significance. Okay. When you read that of the Passover, signifying the deliverance the Lord gave to the Israelites mm. from what? Egypt, yes. right? So all these um, feasts, that's the men were to go before the Lord and offer. When you read the lesson very well, mm. the lesson said something uh, which uh, I want to read in the uh, in the readings. Yes, you want to make yeah. reference. Yes, I yeah. want to make reference over here. Mm -hmm. That the purpose of the pilgrimage in ancient Israel was to behold the face of God. Mm -hmm. This meant to experience God's favor. To seek the face of God means to ask God for help. Mm -hmm. What have they done that they want God? They have to go to God for help. Mm -hmm. Now this shows that all these sacrifices or offering that they were offering to the Lord were not complete. Mm. Therefore, we need somebody who will go before the Lord and offer the word is better sacrifice. Mm. And the only person who could do that for us is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ appeared before God with a better sacrifice, interceding mm. on our behalf, seeking a homeland, better country, built by God himself. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Elder. So, Pastor. Yes, sir. Um, the question is, why should the reality of what Christ has done, not only on the cross, but also what he's doing now in heaven give us assurance of salvation. Very beautiful. You see, Jesus before the Father, what the Israelites were practicing, the feasts and the rest of them, was especially to, to tell the Israelites that there is a God in heaven who cares for them, who protects them and who provides for them. All right. God was protecting them from idol worship. You see these feasts, mm. um, the beginning of harvest, Tishri, the beginning year on their calendar. Mm. And the beginning of harvest somewhere May, June. And this was the period when God was giving them the commandments. Mm. on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. God was pointing them to something, saying to the Israelites that, you see, don't be like the world. Mm -hmm. So these feasts <coughs> were pointing to God, uh, to the people that 
God is their provider, mm. or was their provider, and is still the provider. Mm. God was with them. God is taking care of them. Mm. God is always with them. Right. And the picture being painted here mm. is we see the, um, the feasts, and we see the children of Israel. Mm. You see them visiting a central point three times in a year mm. to make sure that they have come before the Lord, mm. to bring their feast, to celebrate the Lord. God was trying to protect them from idol worship. Right. So if we see what God has done for them, we also appreciate what God is doing for us. All right. Let me just summarize it that with what you have just said. Sure. It's, it's, it's true. And this feast we're talking about, the book of Leviticus chapter 23, mm -hmm. begins by saying these are the feasts, feasts. of the Lord. Yes. So it is actually a misnomer or erroneous when we label the feast as Jewish feast. No. They were feasts of the Lord that he instituted for his people. Mm. But in God's calendar, he knew that they were to be practiced or they were to be um, celebrated or observed for a certain period of time until when Christ comes, his sacrifice and his death will now merge or bring together all these feasts mm -hmm. and put them to an end. But the principles will continue to be what? Remain, Remain. right? So how do we, how do we, now that Jesus has come to die, he is before the Father, how do we appreciate the principles that were enshrined okay. in these feasts? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. How do we appreciate them? The because we don't physically observe them again. Yeah, right? yeah, I know yes. there are some. I know there are exactly, some people exactly. who practice them, <laughs> even though they will say that they don't use sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Some people still mm -hmm. remember those, mm -hmm. you know, um, commemorate mm -hmm. those yeah. feasts without animal sacrifice. Yes. They believe in Jesus, mm -hmm. but they still celebrate these mm -hmm. um, feasts. So, what 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 should be our attitude or our relationship towards? Them? Once again, let me, you see, the Passover is mm. a reminder of God's redeeming grace. Mm. God's redeeming grace. Though it's not being practiced today. Mm. But if we follow Jesus Christ to the Holy of Holies, if we follow Jesus Christ to the temple where he's ministering on my behalf and your behalf, mm. we can see what he is doing there. In fact, to put this in summary, we come to understand that Jesus Christ is doing even more. Um, today he is before the Father. Mm. And maybe as we go on in lesson, there's something I'll point out. All right. You see, Jesus is ministering on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Those things that I'm supposed to have been doing, these things that I walk so many miles, mm -hmm. you know, the, the one question still remains. Why was it that women do not attend this feast? And he said, men. You see, Jesus Christ is before his father, mm. pleading on my behalf. First John chapter 2, verse 1, he said, my little children, I write these things to you, that, that you, you do, do not, not sin. sin. But if you sin, mm. we have an advocate. Yes. One of the Bible will tell you, I have a mediator. Yes. So Jesus Christ is ministering on my behalf. So if I look at these feasts, mm. I look at what was being practiced, and I look at what Jesus Christ, I see and I study what Jesus Christ is doing for me. It gives me joy mm. that though physically we don't practice those things, Jesus Christ is continuing telling us that, yes, we have put away this thing, or he has put away this thing, but that thing that makes it so significant that thing that makes it work for my salvation is still ongoing. All right. So there's no need for pilgrimages yeah. as, as um, a requirement for salvation yes. again, right? That's why I use that language. Yeah. The Passover is a reminder mm. of God's redeeming grace. Mm. I, I love just use that. So we don't need to travel to any, any yeah, holy land is. again. Yes. 
Mm. Uh, some people still travel to Holy Lands mm. and go and take uh, holy water and holy yes. salt <laughs> and, and, and other things. Yeah. Do they still work? It's a big challenge. I was discussing with Pastor when yes. you were coming. I asked him, uh, Pastor, if Some time today, ago, the nation sponsored some pastors yeah, to travel yes, to Israel yeah, yeah. and take, uh, I mean, go and pray there. Yeah. Yes. I even asked him when we were coming that if we are to appear before the Lord mm -hmm. in our time, mm. three times as it used to be in those days, mm. imagine I'm coming all the way from the northern region mm. to Accra, if this is the Jerusalem city, mm, mm. coming all the way from that place, mm. and coming not empty-handed, as the lesson mm. says. Mm. You do not come empty-handed. You come to offer a sacrifice. Mm. So buying all these you know, lambs and other things just to come and do sacrifice, it's, it's a cost. Mm. So we should understand what the Lord has done for us and just follow what the Bible says. All right. People, I don't, uh, I myself see that it's the understanding that the people don't have. Mm. They don't really understand uh, what the Lord has done for them and they don't appreciate it. Just as Pastor said, mm. that we should appreciate what the Lord has done for us. Mm. And when we appreciate what the Lord has done for us, we will be humble before the Lord and follow his state of what's he has put in place for us. All right. So those who are still you know, believing in these sacrifices and other things, mm. uh, I think um, and uh, holy lands. We, we, yeah, holy lands. And holy go water. there, <laughs> go for water. Some and of them they things. go for what do you, what do you, what's <laughs> the name? <laughs> the the, the bracelet and uh, other things. Yeah. yeah. Bongos and uh, no, no, I, I want to ask something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Pastor, uh, make the point briefly, and then right. you add the invitation. What invitation okay. is God giving to us? I want us to uh, make reference to what is the, the pamphlet. It said, this is the sense in Hebrews of Jesus' ascension. Jesus is ascended to God with a perfect sacrifice. With a perfect sacrifice. Jesus also ascended to heaven as our forerunner into the presence of God. He has made real the program for the believers who journey, seeking a homeland, desiring a better country, looking forward to the city. Mm. The people who journey to Jerusalem, to Rome, whatever. Yes, um, I will not condemn it, but we have this, um, this assurance in what Jesus Christ has given to us, that we are not looking for temporal things. Mm. We are looking for spiritual, eternal things. Mm. So if I go to Jerusalem, whatever thing I gather is temporal. Go to Rome, whatever thing is temporal. But we are looking at what Jesus Christ has prepared for us mm. through his sacrifice, through the offering, and what he is doing for us today. Thank you. So in the, in the past, God instituted temporal and local things temporal local right um, even the, the the temple of Jerusalem you have to visit there um, when you are praying you even have to face mm. point you know and that's why Daniel face um, the direction of the temple his window and face the direction of there but now the principle is global and spiritual you know what Christ has done for us everywhere you are you are the temple of God everywhere you are you cry unto God, he will hear you. Um, so, uh, Pastor, what is the invitation that God is giving us? Uh, Titus speaks for itself. Mm. God's invitation. Yes. You see, God is always looking forward to building a very strong and a better relationship with us. Mm. So, God invited his people. Come on, I say like carrying them on the wings of eagle protecting them, taking them to a destination he has decided and planned for them. So the invitation is God's love for his people. Mm. The invitation is God's care for his people. The invitation is God looking at his people, their condition, and trying to build a permanent place so that his people will look, the people of God will look at 
what God is doing for them. So if we go into the lesson somewhere there, it tells us that God's manifestation of his holiness or my Sinai was to teach the people to learn to fear and respect him. Mm. The fear of the Lord leads to life, wisdom, and honor. So God's invitation mm. for us to come to him like he did to the people of Israel was to keep us in a better and a permanent place mm. where we will see and live with our creator. You see, moving them from Egypt to Canaan mm. was something that God did for them to see how caring he mm. is for the people. Mm. And the same thing we see today that God is inviting us. Oh. In the presence of God, Jesus Christ is the pleading on our behalf. And all the pleadings of Jesus Christ, he is inviting us so that he will build, enable us build that relationship with him, to live with him, to know him, and that to be what God has planned for. So God's invitation is telling us that he cares for us. Wonderful. He loves us. Wonderful. Can we read something from Hebrews chapter 12, mm. verse 18 to 21? To Hebrews buttress 12. the point that pastor is making. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse Hebrews 18. chapter 12, verse 18. Yes. For you have not come to a mountain that may be touched, and to a blazing fire, and to darkness and gloom and wild wind, and to the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words, which sound was such that those who had begged that no further word should be spoken to them, for they could not bear the command. If even a beast touches the mountain, it will be stoned. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I am full of fear and trembling. <laughs> Other verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, mm -hmm. the heavenly Jerusalem, and to marriage of angels. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, what we have read here, the gulf that existed or sin brought, introduced between God and humans or humanity is so wide. The line of separation in terms of holiness and righteousness, God's righteousness and ours, there's a big difference that if God is to really show himself the way that he is, not, none of us can stand, exactly, right? Exactly. And that's what um, happened to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. They could not behold. Even though God wanted them to come, they could not behold. Now, because of our mediator, because of Jesus, we are now invited to come, appear before, um, appear before God, right? Yes. Appear before God. And we, we are told that, we are told that, in fact, we are told that we have even um, seen what? We have come to Mount Zion, Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. Mm -hmm. How possible is this when we are still here in this uh, sun and <laughs> sinful and dark world? <laughs> Paul is saying we have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. How has, has this happened? Okay. We look at Mount Zion. And the expression there always stands for the presence of God, even in heaven. Mm. And we are looking at what God has done for us and what God has done in waiting for us. I always love to use this expression, the kingdom of grace. You see, until we get to heaven, we might not understand with the feeble human mind we cannot really understand what Christ did for us, doing and will do for us. Okay. Until we get to heaven, I think it's difficult for the human mind to understand. Mm. You see, Christ saved us and he's given us a picture mm. that 
If you live this with the law written in your hearts and you obey the commands of the law, you are in the kingdom of grace. Mm. In the kingdom of grace, God is preparing you for the kingdom of glory. All right. So on Mount Zion, God is saying, this is where I have prepared for you. Okay. And by obeying him, by obeying the Lord, and allow him to write his law in our hearts, for it to reflect, mm. for people to see that yes, we are the children of God. Mm. It helps us to know exactly where we are no. as Christians. Okay. So Mount Zion also can be so represented as people who are standing in their Father's kingdom, mm. people who are before our Creator. Jesus Christ has ushered us into the presence of God. He is leading us, and yes. we are following, yes. him, we are following yes. him as our big brother. Because of Jesus, why should we not be afraid to draw near to a holy God? What are the conditions, however, for us to be able to draw near? Elder, yeah. you see, uh, yes. in, the, in the olden days, like in the um, Mount Sinai, yes. what happened? The yes. people were terrified, yes. and they were trembling. Yes. Now, because of Christ, we have access. Yes. Yes. We are to draw, to, to draw near to God um, without fear. But does that mean that we can go to the presence of God and behave, behave any way? Any way. No, Pastor. You know, be chewing gum, no. be, uh, you know, drinking water and other things. I think Moses already uh, told the Israelites, mm. I just want to make reference here, then okay. come back. Uh, what Moses told them, uh, when they requested that he should be their immediator, Moses reminded to the people of their lack of faith and their apostasy with the golden calf and how he was afraid of meeting God because of their sins. Mm. So pastor, lack of faith, then the sin. Mm. Now by the grace of God, we have Jesus Christ in the presence of God pleading on our behalf. Then the condition there for us is this, one, we should have faith in Jesus Christ, mm. who is there interceding for us. Then number two, as humans, by all means, we will fall, mm -hmm. we will sin. Yeah. But when we sin, we have this assurance that Jesus Christ is there for us, mm. interceding for us. So mm. when we sin, we confess through the Lord Jesus Christ to our God and our sins will be forgiven. All right. So I think Pastor, there is a lesson here for us. The people were calling for God. They wanted to see God. Mm. But when the Lord made himself available for them to see him, they themselves were running away. <laughs> you see, Pastor, there are certain things that we are doing that also prevent us from seeing the Lord. Mm. And that is the lesson for us over here, that we should be very careful. Anything that we see to be sin as Christians, I think we should live to expectation. Somewhere in the lesson, mm -hmm. it says we should live to expectation. What the Lord you know, has done for us and continue doing for us. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't you know, take the grace that we have as something you know, cheap. We, we'll something it. cheap. All right. And I think that's what we are doing as Christians today. All right. We don't value the grace mm. that we have. Mm. So the invitation has come. Yeah. The invitation is there for us, yeah. right? Yes. Softly and tenderly, Jesus yes. is calling, yes. calling. Yes. calling for you and me and, but to come home, right? Yes. For us to come home. But because of our own sinful nature, nature and habit that we are aware of, Yes. We run away. We are the ones running away. Right we don't want to come. Okay, Pastor, why is there a need for a veil? Ha, ah, the need for a veil. For a veil. Yes, with the Tuesday's lesson. We read the sanctuary service, mm -hmm. and we understand that whenever they are on the move, mm. they get to a point and they get settled. Maybe one month, two months, three months, as the case may be. Yes. God instructed them strictly how to build. 
the sanctuary is there. Mm. And the Levites are the next group of people to be their temple around it. Before the people, the tribes, will get their own temple around the whole thing. The Levites building their tents around the sanctuary was assurance that God was telling them that you just can't walk in. Mm. There's something that is holding that you just can't walk in there. So the need for a veil is for our own protection. Mm. The first, the second, and the third veil. You don't go there if you don't have anything doing it. <laughs> for instance, you get to the outer court. Mm. I'm talking about the sanctuary. Yes. The outer court. Where the sacrifices The sacrifices. Place. Or let you have something doing there, you don't enter. Mm. And by the time you get there, you have something you are going to do. Mm. Either to offer sacrifice or something. Yeah. So you go there with the lamb or something, what you are having, and you enter there and whatever you have coming to do, you do and you get out. The priest goes into the first apartment, offer the sacrifice, sprinkling of the blood and coming out. Mm. Once in a year, the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies. So if you see the three apartments and the veil, you don't cross to an apartment if you have nothing doing there. Mm. All is to tell us that God has invited us, mm. but you do not have to enter there because you want to enter there. All right. So there, was a veil, there. so there was a veil in between the outer court, outer court and the holy first place and the holy, most holy place. Okay. okay. And you come into the, first, uh, the outer court, you either come in to confess your sins, bring offering, you are happy, or something. Mm. You enter the priest, uh, the the priest entered the first apartment because he has something doing mm. to sprinkle the blood there or to go in to pray for for you or something mm. the high priest entered the first, second apartment that's the holy of holies once in a year mm. with care mm. so before you cross into another apartment the veil in between tells you that you don't go in there if you have you don't have anything doing there All right. and god has placed those things there to help us like i was trying to see if you open um the bible Get Exodus 20, verse 20. Okay. It says, and Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Based on that fear, that God still wants to protect us. Okay, give us that gift. Okay. Um, so even. Even though that veil was there, even that veil was there, in Exodus 25, verse 8, mm -hmm. God told the people, let them, be let them build me a sanctuary that I may tabernacle or That's dwell among them. Among right? Them. Yes. So the Creator willing to come and dwell among His creation. Yes. Okay, Elder, for the sake of time, yeah. um, let's go to the Wednesday's lesson for me. Um, now, so what is the new and the living way through the veil that right. we have now? Thank you, uh, Pastor. Then you can uh, join it with your, if you have comments about the previous okay. one, you can join All it. All right, okay. So, Pastor, the new and the living way is a new covenant that Jesus inaugurated with his sacrifice in accession to heaven. Mm. Right. And uh, the new covenant, which is the new covenant which has provided forgiveness of sin and has put the law in our hearts. Uh, that makes it possible for us to approach God with confidence. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Mm. It has made it possible for us to approach God with what? Confidence. Mm. Because uh, we ourselves have nothing to do. Jesus has fulfilled all the obligations for us. That is number one. Then number two, the same true of the new covenant. The new covenant also implies the inauguration that Jesus Christ ministry on our behalf. What Jesus Christ is doing in heaven on our behalf. Mm. And the last one that I want to add 
has to do with the, the sacrifice of Jesus, however, uh, as Satan has been you know, cast out from heaven for what the Lord is doing. Up. Jesus Christ died here on earth. Mm. Now, in heaven, Jesus Christ will not die again. And so all our sins, all our sins on earth here, Jesus Christ bore that sin. So in heaven, Jesus Christ will not die again. So Satan mm. has been driven from heaven. He has been now, cast out. Cast out. Mm. Now we have only Jesus Christ who is interceding on our behalf. Okay. And that makes it what, very beautiful. Mm. And that is the new and the living way through the veil. What the Lord is doing for us in his Father's presence. Wonderful. Wonderful. So these <laughs> lessons and these things we are studying from the book of Hebrews is trying to strengthen our trust in Jesus. All right in yeah. Jesus yes, in Jesus Christ and to and to let us draw closer and closer so that that intimate relationship will be there no veil yes anymore right Jesus in other words becomes our veil in other words no one should come in between us and Christ as a child of God as a Christian no one should come in between the two of you. At best, what somebody can do is to show you the way to, the Christ, to Christ, to lead you, right? To point you to the lamp who takes away the sin of the world. But do not let anyone come in between you and Christ because there's no veil. You remember um, when Jesus died on the cross, right? The, and the, the earth shook. Mm -hmm. yes. What happened? The veil, the veil separated, separated the most holy from the holy. Mm -hmm. Drawn, I mean, no, top, Luke 23, top, yes. verse 45. From top to bottom. That's all. Okay. So, um, whatever accusations that Satan has against it's, us is nothing. Even though we are, so there's an interesting question. What accusations could Satan make against you before God if he were allowed? <laughs> many, eh? <laughs> I tell you, many. Now, though he is a liar and even exaggerate, the small that you have done, he will exaggerate it. Yeah. How much would he have to lie about you in order to seek your condemnation? Yeah. And what is your only hope? The only hope. Satan is will not have to lie much this. about you because you've got to get plenty yeah. of accusations please. and you'll be found guilty. Yes, please. All right. But our, holy, our only hope, hope is Jesus, Jesus right? Christ. Yes. Who said? <laughs> Pastor, go on. <laughs> our only hope is Jesus. Like the, 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 you know, Joshua and the high priest, that yes. the Lord rebuke you. They will see his face. We will see his face. El Elder, um, how will we see the face of Jesus? Oh, Pastor, let me come to you, Pastor. How will we see the face of Jesus? We'll see the face of Jesus yes. when he comes again. Mm. And he's returning to come and take his children home. And God has made provision for us. And the only way we'll be able to see the face of Jesus is when we'll be. We allow him to rule our lives. Mm. When we begin the program, you ask this question. Because God said we should come. Must we go there with you? Chewing gums, mm. and this you remember, you mm. make this yes, yes. yes, anyhow and very behave good. anyway because very, <laughs> very good. So we'll see Jesus. Mm. He said we'll see him the way he is. But the only condition is to give our lives to him. Mm. Let him rule in our lives. And that gives us the opportunity that one day we'll see his face. Mm. The assurance is there. And the new covenant he has made with us, give us the assurance that. Gives us the assurance that we'll see his face mm. when we come again. All right. Elder, yeah. though we will see his face, yeah. right now, do we have a glimpse of his face? Yes. And do we have a fortest? Yes, Pastor. Of even the heavenly city? Yes, Pastor. 
even though we've not seen his face yet, mm. but we have assurance in the word of God. What he is doing for us and uh, what he continues to do for us. Has it not been Jesus Christ? Pastor, mm. the question is, where would he have been by now? Mm. So even though we have not seen his face, just as those who are dead in their grave, the promise was made to them, yet they didn't get it. But they had that assurance that yes. one day, one day, one day, mm. they will surely see the face of Jesus. So, uh, so it is with us. Mm. We are also sure that once Christ died, resurrected, and ascended to heaven, mm. indeed, he will surely come for the second time. All right. So surely we'll see his face. Wonderful. Mm. Wonderful. So, um, even though we are still here, yes, the kingdom come, the, the the kingdom of God has come, right? right? And as Christians and as children of God, um, we must live our lives now as kingdom citizens. Yes. <laughs> as kingdom that citizens, it. even That's though like even it. though we are here. We are not children of this yeah. world. Yeah. Oh, we are children of. All right. So um, our time is up. So we the, there is a question down there, very interesting. It says Hebrews is about assurance of salvation. When we are talking about these things, you know, we, we become so happy about it, right? There are issues of joy. How though must we be careful not to mistake presumption for assurance? You get, a, you get a question? Yeah, Pastor, I, I get the question. Uh, we should live our life day by day. Day by day. Yes, please. All right. Day by day. Mm. And daily we should you know, go to our God mm. and make sure that we connect with him. Mm. Pastor, just as our phone that we use, you use uh, what you call it, MTN uh, network. If you don't connect, mm. you, I cannot reach you. Yes. So daily we should connect with our God. Mm. We shouldn't take it for granted. Just say that there, will, there is a high priest who is interceding on our behalf, so mm. we'll live here on earth and do our own thing. Mm. We should make sure that we have connection with our God. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Eric Osborne-Norte and Elder Ellis Patrick Asiam for your contribution. So, beloved, the summary of all that the lesson is telling us is to let nothing come in between you and Jesus. That there's no longer a veil between you and God. And so nothing should come in between you and Jesus. No one. And don't allow anything to come. You have, you have direct access to God. You have direct access to Jesus. And you are invited to come directly and boldly with confidence and faith to the presence of God. Um, next week, we look at Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And it's going to be another insightful and interesting discussion. Shall we pray with Pastor Norte? Let's pray. We thank you, O oh Lord, most merciful and most gracious, giving us this opportunity. He gives us the assurance that you are our creator, our redeemer, and you are our friend. We are thankful to you for giving us Jesus Christ. Today, we stand boldly with joy, with happiness, with assurance that one day we'll see your face. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for everything you are doing for us. And thank you for everything you do for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.